عطر وأفواهكم بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد Last night, we talked about some of the reasons why atheists became atheists. And the previous night, we talked about the <coughs> some of the reasons they came up with. And we said we will talk about the true reasons why atheists became atheists. And we started with two reasons last night. We talked about the invalid methodology they use. We said methodologies are more than one. There are the mental methodology or logic methodology and we talked about the experimentational methodology or experiment methodology, where atheists, they put everything in the lab. And if it go under the experiment, then they prove it and believe in it and take it for granted. Anything that cannot be tested, they don't take it for granted or they don't believe in it or they deny it. So that's why they couldn't reach that level of putting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the existence of Allah in the lab under an experiment and that pushed them to deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anything beyond the nature. Angels, soul, human soul, uh, the hereafter, the day of judgment, anything they couldn't analyze or put in a lab for an experiment they deny it. And we talked about this methodology that it's invalid and it's not accurate because not everything you can put in, you know, in the lab for an experiment to be analyzed. There are many things. Yes, the experimentation method, we said it's a good way for you know, the science, physics, chemistry, you know, these different science field. But for the proof of the world view that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists, it's not a valid methodology. We talked about the mental methodology, it's the valid one, where you know you see the things that guide you to the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that was one of the reasons and the other reason we said they try to cover the logic processes to prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a question that we have to know the answer to before we you know, discuss any further reasons why atheists became atheists. So the question is, Is the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists, is it an innate nature of humans or it's an acquired skill? Are we born with this knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists or we learn it as we go in our lives? Many people, they will say, well, you know, like humans are born knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. It's an innate nature of humans. <coughs> there is something that we have to differentiate. The existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing, and knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the... Uh, Every human being born knowing that there is a God exists. 
And Al-Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals it in the Al-Quran. وَجَحَدُوهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ So they know that a God exists, but they created things to push them to deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So knowing that a God exists, yes, everyone is born knowing that a God exists. The existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an innate nature. But knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an acquired skill. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed divine books, the holy books. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers and prophets and imams. So they guide people to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an acquired skill, but knowing the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's an innate nature. It's like, you know, infants are born, they breastfeed without teaching them. It's an innate nature. They are born knowing how to breastfeed. It's like a bird, baby bird. If you take an egg from, you know, a, a nest and put it somewhere and that egg hatches and this bird didn't see the parents. And when it comes to the time to lay eggs, this bird will go and make a nest. So it's an innate nature. Birds are born to build nests when they lay eggs. So these are the difference between the innate nature and the acquired skills. So knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an acquired skill. But knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists is uh, human nature. And Al-Quran revealed this. فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ الدِّينُ الْقَيْمُ so this question, knowing the answer to this, to this question, leads us to talk about the third reason why atheists became atheists. They build their logic or methodology, as I, I said, the experimentational methodology in a sequence process. So sequence process in the mental methodology or the logic methodology is invalid. Why it's invalid? When you ask an atheist, who created the universe? They, you know, they will answer, it's the material that created the universe. Okay, who created this material? They will go on and on and on, like in a sequence, non-stop. So in their logic, they believe in the sequence process. They will not ever stop at an end to any sequence. They will go with you. This material caused this material to cause that material and so on. They don't stop at an end. They have a sequence. And you, when you ask them who created the first material they will say well the first material created the material after it so they have the cause and effect goes in a sequence never stops the logic methodology it says sequence has to stop you have to stop at some point where that cause that created this effect has to stop at a certain point you cannot go on and on and on. And if you ask them, okay, we believe that the universe was created from the first material. You ask them, okay, this first material, did it exist before? So was it, you know, like it has the power to it was exist before the first material or it existed after the first material. So if they answer, no, it, this powerful material or first material existed before. It didn't. Um, so there's two parts. 
did it exist before or it wasn't um, a thing and it became a thing so if it existed before then it's a powerful material and it's richly extensive material and that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala existed before so the sequence stopped at some point with this powerful first material so that's what we call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what we call God and if, if they say oh it didn't exist and then it became it wasn't a thing and it became a thing we ask them if it wasn't a thing how it became a thing you know it doesn't in the logic if something was nothing it cannot become a thing if it was nothing so it has to have the cause and effect so the sequencing is invalid methodology that they rely on and they take it for granted because they don't stop at any cause they go on and on and on so this is why it's an invalid methodology and they will say that's why we became atheist because we don't believe in the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we don't stop at the sequence goes on and on and on so that's why one of the reasons another reason why they became an atheist or atheist is the mental vanity the arrogance the egos the belief that they have brain and they have the freedom to think anything about this universe so when they reach this point the brain vanity or the mental vanity and there is a story in the time of Imam al-Sadiq peace upon him Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali in the time of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam there was uh, an atheist his name is Ad-Daysani and this man he comes to the Muslim community and tells them I am a creator I give life to living things it's exactly like the story in the Quran Prophet Ibrahim alayhi Prophet Ibrahim السلام, in his time there was a man his name is an -Namrud, and he came to Prophet Ibrahim السلام, and he said I give life to things and I take life away from things I give life and I take life away from things and Pro Prophet Ibrahim السلام, he said okay you give life like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah, Allah gives lives and take lives away from living things he said I do the same thing and Prophet Ibrahim السلام, said okay how you do that he said okay if somebody is in death row you know did something and he's in prison and he's in death row I release that man and I give him life he was going to be killed and I give him life he said okay and then how you take life away from living things he said well if you give me anyone present me with anyone I have my sword I cut their head and I take life away from them Nabi Allah Ibrahim alayhi salam said okay Allah Jalla Jalalu he rises the sun from the east I want you to rise the sun from the west he stopped he stopped he couldn't continue it's the same with this man with the Imam al-Sadiq at Daysani Imam al-Sadiq said okay how you give life to things and take life away from things he said he brought a symbol to Imam al-Sadiq he brought mud and he mixed it with water and he left it till it rottened and worms came out from this rotten mud and he said I created these worms Imam al-Sadiq said okay if you created these worms count them for me he stopped he said okay if you created them 
how many males and females among these worms? And he stopped. And the history said he returned to be a Muslim in the bless of Imam al-Sadiq in his late life. So ad daysani is exactly like an namrud They have this mental or brain vanity. Some people today, some atheists, they have the same thing. They have the brain vanity. They reach a level. They don't believe in anything except the experimentational method. So this is another reason why they became atheists. And there are many reasons, you know, like one of the reason, the attraction to this materialistic world, the love to this life. You know, one of the things that pushed them to become an atheist, they forget about the hereafter. They forget about the day of judgment. They forget that a God exists and in the just of that God they will be judged. They forget all of these things and the l attraction and the love of this world just, you know, take them away from thinking of anything beyond this life. And that will push them to become an atheist. It's exactly like those whom were in the war with Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, like Umar ibn Sa'd. Umar ibn Sa'd, he had the same exact thing when they told him he will become, you know, a governor of Iran and he will have this authority and power and such things. He was attracted to these things and he forgot who is Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He is an Imam. He is, you know, has this power and authority from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the guide to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he turned from all of this belief to kill Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And that's why one of the reasons why he was pushed to commit what he committed against Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. So these are basically some of the reasons. There are lots of other reasons, but these are the obvious reasons why atheists became atheists. So the, the, the methodology they follow, the invalid methodology, the sequencing and the um, experimentational methodology and the um, you know, covering of the mental processes and the you know mental vanity and the attraction to this materialistic world are the most you know visible reasons why they became atheists so this is just in general but there are as i said like in the in the study we mentioned two nights ago 56 reasons why atheists became atheists but all of these 56 reasons you know some of them like uh, I remember one of them was the um, openness to the Western civilization. You know, they read the philosophical, you know, um, uh, books of, you know, the Western authors, the, the, the atheists. And they, it's like throwing somebody who doesn't know how to swim in the sea. So they don't have, you know, like the minimum level of immunity against all of these philosophical ideas from atheists. So these are some of the reasons.